How do you spell relief? Well, when times get tough, howler monkeys turn to playtime for stress relief. And I'm Study Finds guy, Jeff Allen, joined by... Steve Fink, Editor-in-Chief of Study Finds. Well, it's good to have you here, Steve. And uh, Thanks, this, Jeff. This is the latest report from Study Finds over the weekend, where we do always invite people to like and subscribe for the latest information. Okay, so... Um, I know that you've you've read this. I've read this. When times get tough for these uh, this particular species of monkeys, they horse around a bit. It sounds like, and to relieve the stress. Now, this is unique to these monkeys, rather than where other monkeys are kind of they're grooming and they have this social hierarchy, right? Correct. The study was pointing out that uh, that specifically naming howler monkeys as the species of monkeys that that turns to playtime um and like you mentioned it was i think we had another study or previous studies that we've had have shown that yeah you know grooming is often a kind of stress relieving activity for other for other monkeys but i this is this is super interesting i thought it's funny you know when we get together and talk about these things i'm, I'm often reminded of you know, whenever I would go on like vacations with my brothers or we'd just be out doing things, we we could talk for hours about how the space shuttle flies and none of us knew. So right. that's what I love about this site is that we do get a chance to actually hear from experts who like learn about these things. And, yeah. um, you know, in particular with the monkeys and not the singing group, the monkeys either. Primates play more when they get together and forage for fruit more so than anything else with these guys, these howler monkeys. Yeah. Right. And they found that play among Mexican howlers and golden mantled howler monkeys grows in line with the amount of time they spend foraging for fruit so what do you think that means i mean is it it's more of a thing it's not really about stress relief or it is or... well it sounded like uh what i'm reading in the study is that um particularly in times when food was scarce or it was harder to find they you know maybe if they went out foraging and they didn't bring back much or there wasn't much um you know for their group um, it sounds like, you know, that would potentially be something that would bring stress to the monkeys, uh, the ones that are going out and foraging, um, obviously perhaps being nervous that, you know, they don't have enough, uh, resources for the group. They don't have enough food. And so I guess they're a way of, um, keeping kind of tensions low. Well, you know, and it's, I think it's kind of interesting because, I myself, I'm kind of a nervous laugher. So like in stressful right. situations, right. I basically start to horse around a little bit or I get nervous right. or I might laugh and and it, it doesn't work real well. <laughs> I, I have just a, a horrible experience when I was a kid. I had a friend yeah. whose uncle had passed and I'm not good in, you know, situations where you, you go to a funeral and you're trying to be solemn. And I found myself as a teenager here, you know, laughing and trying to be a little funny when it was right. not a really appropriate way to be, but just in stress in general, I, I kind of find that I react that way. Yeah. So <laughs> you would have been a great howler monkey. <laughs> I think maybe I was in a previous <laughs> life or something. Now That's these, right. these howler monkeys are in the ones that they study are in the rainforest of Mexico mm -hmm. and Costa Rica. And they also found that the amount of adult play is linked to the number of potential playmates and increases in line with the size of each group. So now I didn't see how big these groups were, but I guess the more the merrier. Is that basically the point here? Yeah, you know, I mean, monkeys uh, are known to be social animals, hang out in their in their families or groups. They average about 14 to 40, um, 40 members in their social groups from what I have learned about Mexican howlers and learning about this study. So particularly if resources are running low, particularly if you're hungry, you know, you're getting a little hangry. Um, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, you know, I, I, it's interesting that, that that's their kind of instinctive way you know, to go about and kind of keep, keep tensions down. When do they know? start throwing the poop? Right. They start. Yeah. I don't what know if is that would with, be playfulness or not. What is with monkeys? I don't understand why that's the thing. The, the poop throwing? Yes. I've never, you know what? We have to find a study on that, Jeff. We got to get that study. <laughs> I think I'm ready to see a study on that because I it's know, just right? gross i mean people have monkeys as pets it's something that i don't think i would ever do right <laughs> and if there's anything that i think would bring stress to my life it's a, a critter running around the house that could probably throw poop at me you know it's funny because i was going to say that we could almost learn something from this 
from this species from from howler monkeys because like you said you know you would joke to kind of light right the mood. and really that's where we get in you know get the that phrase lighten the mood because when things get hot humor is often the way to go you know uh, um and and in this sense it sounds like again that is their instinctive way to just chill out and keep the group from from going crazy these guys, from what I read in the study, you know, they they tend to eat leaves and fruit is kind of like a bigger deal, right? Big deal for them. Yeah. And so that's why in particular, I'm guessing that it, it's 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 a re- response to the foraging uh, aspect. <laughs> you know what this really reminds me of? So have you ever been like, I, I don't know if you've ever done like a road trip with family or like gone somewhere that's a little more of a distance. Yeah. And, and I have done this. And I find myself feeling this as we're thinking about this is driving the car knowing that i'm lost already okay right. and and i haven't told anybody i'm lost and this yeah. is really before the days of gps but then finally having a person who shall rename uh, remain nameless sitting to my right say do you know where the hell you're going <laughs> and then you laugh oh of course i know where i'm going you got to put the blame on that person they should be navigating that's exactly it See, I thought you were going in a different direction and, oh, and talking about when, you know, I think about when we're on, we're on road trips and, you know, again, I've got, I've got young kids and, you know, eventually they want snacks and when <laughs> we don't have snacks or something that they want to eat in the car, things can get pretty tense. You know, the kids, you know, I can understand again, we want to keep the kids happy. We want to keep the kids playful. Right. You know, that's why we throw on the movie. That's why we, you know, find them games and fun things to do because bringing that, Kind of layer of playfulness into the car, <laughs> right? Makes them Games. forget that we're out of pirate's booty or, uh, you know, Doritos, whatever my kids are eating that day. Do you, have you ever tried the games, like you know, the license plate game where you get the letters? You hit, you get to J or Q, and all of a sudden the game's over, and then problems occur. Oh <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have an, we have another one we play where, uh, in fact, we bought this whole like. The, this deck of cards that like has a list of games, like road trip games that you can like, you don't need anything. Right. For. And um, there's one in particular where, uh, see now we're turning the parenting tips. Later yeah. now. But uh, <laughs> there's one game where the kids have to, uh, they, they, you just drive around and for each letter of the alphabet, you start with a, and you look for something outside that starts with a, and, uh, and, <laughs> You just keep going through the alphabet, and I find my kids often then argue over like the veracity of certain things, whether like, oh, it's correct or not. I didn't see that boat for B. <laughs> I didn't see it. We, you saw it, but I didn't see it. We can't count it unless we both see it. Yeah, I found that we had to stop that game when when the kids learned what politically correct humor or incorrect oh, humor yeah. was. So True. we figured we'd move right along. Yes. But yeah, then you're just calling people names. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that doesn't work. And then, okay. and then you completely. So that's where we need to bring some howler monkeys into the the car. Thank you for bringing bringing us back full circle, <laughs> Steve. Yeah. I was actually I was getting a little nervous, Jeff, before, and so I wanted to bring the anecdote in there to kind of mm-hmm. just. Are you are you calm now? I'm calm now. <laughs> okay, breathe deeply. Very good. Yeah. Got so it. there's no. So I'm reading this, which I think goes back to my earlier question. They have no fixed social hierarchy within which they can navigate competition and conflict, which really kind of goes into what we're talking yeah. about here. And it's but, actually really interesting because because that is often a very big um, you know characteristic of of social groups um, in primates is the 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 hierarchy. Well, see, and I didn't realize grooming was a big part of that. I thought that was just, okay, they groom each other. But it's like, who's grooming who and and, right. and when? I, I, I did not yeah. know that was a thing. The grooming, obviously one of the most common traits of, of primates across most, if not all species, I would guess. I mean, again, that's just me assuming from all of the various monkey studies we've posted <laughs> on study finds, we have posted many. Um, I also was reading about how It says the amount of adult play is linked to the number of potential playmates and increases in line with the size of the group. So the larger the group of howler monkeys, the more playfulness there's going to be. And again, if we're talking about things getting stressful over foraging, over lack of resources, I could understand why there would be more playfulness because you've got 
more tension. Going back to the grooming. I know I'm kind of stuck. Yeah. You want me to turn around? I can, I I got to hurry back, but (laughs) if you want to start just like picking at the screen. Well, why is it that they, they do the picking and then they like put it in their mouth? To me, that seems like you're defeating the purpose. Okay. This thing shouldn't be on your skin, but I'm going to eat it. Why are, why do dogs sniff each other's behinds, Jeff? These are true. Things we'll never point. quite understand. I, it just, it, you know, maybe there's a, and there may be a study on that, which I, you know. I, maybe I think, there's delicious things hanging out. In, I just can't yeah, imagine. Maybe. I, the researchers, instead of the grooming, they believe the play, it plays a key role in helping these guys regulate the relationships and avoid conflict. The adults spend more time playing with other adults and... Yeah. You know, the and the juveniles, I guess they're not a threat. And then the females spend more time playing than the adult males, which in the study, they said that was weird because you would they thought that it would be opposite. Yeah, well, you know, males can be more territorial, I, you know. Uh... Let me read this to you. This is from yeah, Dr. Jacob Dunn. And this okay. is a quote. It's a little long, but I think it's interesting. Despite its appearance and our own perception of what play means, play is not always associated with frivolity or education. Instead, we think it fulfills an important function in howler monkey society by reducing tension when there's competition over scarce resources. We found that the levels of play are at their highest when howler monkeys are feeding on fruit, which is a valuable and defendable resource. And female adults play more than males. This is striking as females would be more vulnerable to food competition than males. If there's less fruit and less competition, there's less playing. That would seem to me to be kind of a self-defeating problem. <laughs> I mean, <Yeah. laughs> you've got. Well, it just sounds like again. Uh, it says we think it fulfills an important function in howler monkey society by reducing tension when there's competition over scarce resources. I just think it sounds like a great, a great lesson in life. Like, listen, guys, times are tough. Uh, Lighten up, know, folks. Yeah, we gotta. I'm overthinking it then. You're right. So relax, lighten up, and you'll get through life with a lot less stress that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and no one likes a hangry monkey, you know? (laughs) That's true. That's when the poop starts flying, and that's that's the problem. That's right. You know, you can can read more in the animal section. All you got to do is just, uh, you can go to our homepage and click on animals. There's a little animal section right in the middle, or you can go up to the very top of the homepage on studyfinds.com. Click on more and you'll see animals in there as well. If you're reading any of these stories on studyfinds.com, you can see that there's a category up there. You can click on the category. It'll take you to the page. And if you're looking for this particular study, you can check the description of this video while you're there liking and subscribing. Then you can click on the link and go right to the study and read all about monkeys and why they do or don't throw poop. Love it. (laughs) Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, That's Editor-in-Chief, Steve Fink. I'm Jeff Allen, the Study Finds Guy, and we'll catch you next time out here at Study Finds.